Chapter 3 Poverty Can Teach Lessons That Privilege Cannot by Jack Klugman Poverty Taught Me A Lot Poverty proved to be one of the motivational factors in my early life. As my childhood passed in poverty, it automatically transformed me into a frugal, self-reliant and challenge-accepting person. In other words, the poverty inspired and steered me towards a path of prosperity. Of course, in my tender years, I was not alone in suffering from poverty. In a small village like Shirkhel, everyone was poor. My schoolmates were equally impoverished. At school, we would all bring a simple lunchbox containing roti and chutney. Our clothes were generally patched and worn out and we could go to school barefoot. We would wear the same school uniform every day throughout the year. But difficulties would arise in the monsoon. The uniform wouldn't dry completely owing to the humid air. It persisted in remaining damp even if Aji attempted in drying it on a hot stove. Then there would be no option but to wear other clothes. Our school teachers were sympathetic enough to understand this difficulty. So they would never punish us for not wearing the uniform. Therefore, we were never concerned about the state of our uniforms. Buttons would often get torn off in brawls with classmates. We would patch them up with safety pins to avoid suing them on again and again. The safety pins had one more use. As we would go to school without any footwear, our bare feet would often get pricked with thorns and safety pins could always be relied on to get them out. There was only one umbrella in our home. Aji never needed it as she seldom stepped out. Thus, Ajuba was the sole user of the umbrella. I did not have a separate umbrella or a raincoat. In the rainy season, while going to school, I would usually wear a jute bag over my head. It only covered the body partially. Sometimes the rain would make the school bag damp and wipe away the homework on the slate. Then punishment, in the form of a smack on my palm with a cane by our school teacher, was imminent. We would use a chalk to inscribe letters on the slate and I used it to the fullest. For writing in notebooks, we would use reed pens. The price of a packet of ink powder was only 5 paise. Still, I couldn't afford it. I would often ask my classmates to lend me a couple of ink drops, which the boys would grow tired of. However, the kind-hearted girls always generously donated. There was no electricity in our home. We would do all the work from evening to night in the feeble light of a kerosin lantern. Daily maintenance of the lantern was my duty and I had learned it from Aji. Every day after returning from school and before going to play, I would wipe the glass chimney of the lantern with white sand, filter the kerosene through a cotton cloth and remove the black layer of grime from the wick. In the evening, Aji would light an oil lamp at prayer time and Ajuba would make me recite the hymns and number tables. I would study and complete my homework in the light of the lantern well before Aji finished her cooking, as burning the midnight oil was neither affordable nor allowed. Kerosene was a precious commodity then. In school, I was an average student. I was weak in mathematics and would barely score passing marks in other subjects. Every time I tried to solve arithmetic problems, calculation mistakes were sure to happen. I would then check the calculations again and again, but this phobia surprisingly proved advantageous for me in later years. I had developed a habit of cross-checking every transaction at least twice, which is essential for any business. Also, my love for playing did not transform into acquiring a proficiency in sports. I would read storybooks a lot and exchange them with other students. We would buy used textbooks from senior students at half price. There was a strict discipline to use the textbooks with utmost care. We would wrap the books with covers 
usually made from old newspapers. We would always keep the books clean and unmarked to recover the invested half price. Our school headmaster was Mr. Marudkar and class teacher Mr. Ingle. Both were strict and discipline loving but at the same time intrinsically kind. Mr. Marudkar's son Sanjay was my close friend. All villages from Shirkhed were poor but possessed hearts of gold. Everyone would help others by their capacity. I remember a person named Mr. Vasant Vaidya who would come to our home to deliver milk every day. He had a special affection for me and would always admire me for being a kid living far from parents and learning on his own. After pouring and delivering the milk in a pot from his kettle, he would call me and offer a cup full of milk. The weather of Shirkhir was pleasant and unpolluted. I acquired sound health by playing in such a wholesome atmosphere. I suffered very little from illness or ailments. Another advantage was that Ajuba, being a compounder in a government hospital, had a peculiar habit of keeping a constant vigil on the family's health. Whenever I felt even the faintest inkling of cold, cough or fever coming on, he would lose no time in taking me to the doctors and getting the medicines available. Ajuba's discipline inculcated in me the habit of taking medicines on time, which I still obey. I would come to Shirkhed sometimes, stay for a couple of days and then return to Mumbai. Every time, she would bring snacks, toys and storybooks for me without fail. I's visits were a welcome relief from my otherwise monotonous life. When the day of her leaving came, I would hug her tightly and with a tearful face plead with her to take me to Mumbai. Hiding her helplessness, she would verbally assure to take me with her during vacations, but at the same time, turn her face elsewhere and wipe her tears, attempting not to show them to me. Elder brothers in families are often called Dada, and I was no exception. I would convince me by saying, Dada, since you are the elder brother, you have to behave with tolerance and consideration. This phase will be over soon and I will take you with me to Mumbai. I would feel very gloomy when I left. I kept hoping for the chance to go to Mumbai and spent my primary school years with a deep yearning to go home. And finally, the moment arrived. Baba completed 15 years of service in the Air Force and accepted retirement. He came to live in the MES quarters of the military campus at Kalina. Now, since the entire family could live together, I eagerly arrived to escort me back to Mumbai. While leaving Shirkhed, I became very emotional. During three years there, I had settled in fairly well. I had been blessed with loving friends and teachers. Kuralkar Aji Ajoba had raised me and taught me good conduct. But despite all this, the desire to be with my family was always strong. With the mingled feeling of anxiety and anticipation, I arrived in Mumbai.